watching SLC TV, Salt Lake City's Government Access Channel. Today I'm outside the Utah State Capitol, home to the Utah Legislative Session beginning January 22nd and goes until March 8th. For this week's episode of Capital City News, we hear from Moana Uluave Hafoka about the Salt Lake City Mayor's Office of Diversity and Human Rights. And our History Minute is about the Environmental Protection Agency and city sidewalks. Let's get started with our legislative update and look back. The Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Utah, and that I will discharge the duties and that I will discharge the duties of my office with fidelity. <laughs> I knew we couldn't get through. Congratulations! They are totally committed to the neighbors and residents they serve. They are deliberate, thoughtful, and passionate, and they are kind and caring, and they have great empathy. Dr. Martin Luther King Day is a day where we give service as a city and we encourage our residents to engage in the community with service in whatever way suits their needs. So every year Salt Lake City Corporation, the mayor's office and some council members come out here to the Utah Food Bank. We pack boxes, we break down boxes and we spend a few hours giving back to the community in this way. Martin Luther King wasn't just about race and ethnicity, he was about all people, he was about hunger, he was about housing, he was about making sure that everybody had a place at the table. So I'm going to turn my time over to Mayor Biskuski and I appreciate her continuing this tradition. You know, Dr. King was a real hero of mine. He was somebody who really understood that we are in this together. When you come together to do good for anyone else, then our differences and the boundaries that may normally exist dissolve. And as we build a city for everyone, the work we do every day matters. We came in to do some real shifts and to create change. And those shifts are all on the heels of Dr. King's words, where we're talking about housing and helping people experience homelessness, and we're working on job creation for everyone. All those things matter, and this is a day to celebrate from somebody who has inspired all of us. About six people die every week in Utah from opioids overdose, making our state the seventh highest in the nation for overdose deaths. We can change that. Salt Lake City Fire Department is providing leave-on-scene naloxone kits to help in the case of an overdose. First thing you want to do is recognize the signs and symptoms of an overdose. Difficulty breathing. You can't arouse them by shaking or calling their name. First thing you want to do is call 911. Then you go and get your kit. So you're going to pull out the vials of naloxone and the syringes. Take the cap off of the vial, insert the syringe, pull back to draw up the liquid. Inject the liquid into a large muscle group, shoulder or thigh. The drug can take three to five minutes to work. After three minutes, if the person is not responding, go ahead and give the second dose. In the meantime, Salt Lake City Fire Department will be responding and we'll take over patient care as soon as we arrive. Fire Department? Yeah, yeah. Hi. As you can see from the previous example, it can be that easy to assist in saving the life of a family member or a loved one. If you're at risk of overdose or have a family member or a friend that's at risk of overdose, you can get a naloxone kit from the Salt Lake City Fire Department or you can buy one over the counter at various local pharmacies. More than 30% of Americans suffer chronic pain and have prescriptions, making them highly available and subtly addictive. In fact, nearly all opiate painkillers are just as addictive as heroin. For more information, visit opioidemic.org or download visual how-to instructions at slcfire.com or on our Pinterest page. 
For this week's interview, we hear from Moana Uluave Hafoka, Policy Advisor and Outreach Coordinator for the Salt Lake City Mayor's Office of Diversity and Human Rights. In my role, I, of course, with the policy advising, um, get to advise the mayor about all of the diversity and human rights issues within the city and even outside of the city. I work closely with our community empowerment team, um, which consists of the community liaisons, as well as um, our refugee, refugee community liaison, Fatima Madiri, and I'll start working closely with Angela Doan on education and just seeing our whole city as, um, what, how do we see this from an equity lens? I come from a background of community development and empowerment, working with communities. I myself, is, um, I'm from the Glendale Poplar Grove neighborhood. And so um, what I want to bring to that is just be the boots on the ground. I think that um, making sure that we, we meet with folks where they're at, instead of always asking people to come into City Hall, how does that look like for us to be out in the neighborhood? Um, making sure that people have services or what, what are the real needs and asking those types of questions, um, as well as not reinventing the wheel, but making sure that we're at all these events and listening to people. Um, and then bringing all of those things from the ground and see how do we inform policy in that, in that direction. So um, making sure that we listen to people, we hear what they're saying and bring it back here to City Hall and see what does that look like on, um, in an administrative level as well as a policy making level. I think my, I, what attracted me to this position was a huge part was my daughter so I was born in the neighborhood, um, and then when I started my family, I came back and, and, and started my family again, just right off of the street that I was born on. And I, I often am very um, thankful for those that have come before me, but then for the first time in my life, it wasn't just those, the kids that I grew up with, and their children and figuring out how to help their future. Now this was actually my kid and seeing what types of schools she was going to attend, how she was gonna grow up in Salt Lake City. And I, I think that the biggest part when uh, this job opening happened and I was grappling with whether to apply or not or it was okay to, to stay safe and be in the position that I was in was that I looked at my kid and thought, what kind of Salt Lake City do I want for a Tongan girl growing up in Glendale? And I wanted to be a part of that discussion, not just on a grass grassroots level, but on a policy level. How can I help craft a better world for her? And now it's time for our History Minute. In 1973, the Environmental Protection Agency found that the air quality in Salt Lake City's downtown area was much more polluted than federal guidelines allowed. The cause of this pollution was largely due to the high rate of vehicles pumping emissions through the wide streets of Salt Lake. City leaders scrambled to come up with a solution because the EPA would place an embargo on construction of all future parking lots or facilities in the city until they had a plan. Eventually, city leaders decided that narrowing the streets downtown would be the best option to reduce traffic. It was Mayor Jake Garn that realized narrowing streets wouldn't be a popular proposal, so he told residents that they weren't narrowing streets, but widening sidewalks. With the help of businesses and the Salt Lake Chamber, this got folded into a larger effort to beautify downtown Salt Lake, and Main Street specifically. Work began in 1974 and the new sidewalks would grow from 20 feet across to 30, affording more room for 44 new drinking fountains, 27 new trash receptacles, and dozens of new benches, trees, and flower boxes. By 1975, the work was finished and Jake Garn, no longer the mayor but then a senator, came back to cut the ribbon on the new downtown. The new changes yielded the results and air quality improvement we needed, and Salt Lake City became a better looking city because of it. Thanks for watching another episode of Capital City News. Please join us next time to stay up to date on all the latest. Salt Lake City is also a host venue for the Sundance Film Festival, which is happening January 18th through January 28th. 
We hope you get a chance to enjoy the best in films right here in Salt Lake City. For SLC TV, I'm Poonam Kumar.